and on and so Lord we pray that um, you would heal all Christian marriages and save all uh, marriages that do not have you as the center of their lives. Right here. Let me see this first. Right, this one hundred percent. And Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that uh, you would bless and protect our family and all. Uh, Christian families and all people from ourselves, from our flesh, and from the devil, and from the demons of hell, and from evil people in the family, and from evil people in the church, sad to say, and from evil people in the world. And Lord, place upon us today the whole arm of God. Surround us with the band of your holy angels and the wall of your holy fire. Cover us and cleanse us through the blood of Christ and make us, Lord, to be whiter than the snow. And, Lord, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Grant me and all of us here your grace and your strength, your unction and your anointing and the power of your Holy Spirit to pray uh, over the prayer list to read your holy word and uh, Lord to read and understand other devotional material and Lord uh, to proclaim and to share your holy gospel and we pray that lost souls would be saved Christians would be revived your holy name glorified in Jesus Christ exalted we cast all care upon you, for Lord, we know that you care for us. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for sake. Amen. As we now pray over the brothers. Testing one, two, three. Everybody join me in praying over the prayer list. And uh, it seems like we have more lighting in here today than usual. But that's okay. Welcome, everybody. We thank God for you. Thank you so much for joining us as we pray for one another, as we pray for others. Uh, I've already prayed a full prayer, as I always do every morning. You may have missed some of it, uh, but it will, it will be up later on demand. And uh, uh, also, um, I'm getting ready to pray over our prayer list. I hope that you have a prayer list uh, that you pray over every day. It may not be as long and as extensive as mine. You can join uh, with me and praying over our prayer list because if you don't pray 
over a prayer list. You should pray from your heart first and pray over a prayer list the second. I call that strategic praying. The devil does not like either one of them. So he's going to fight you on all of them every time you pray. That's just the nature of the beast, my dear friends. So you can repeat after me. Uh, our prayer list, I believe, is to the right uh, of uh, uh, on YouTube, it is, at least. Um, we're on Facebook times three. We're on Periscope times two. And we're on YouTube. And we're going to be on some other places here soon, by the grace of God. If you can't see me, if you can't hear me, let our technician know. Holy Father God, as we continue in prayer, we pray, Lord, for three over three million people to come to know you as Savior around the world through the preaching of the gospel, through this ministry alone. We pray for the salvation of millions more through other ministries before it is too late. We pray, Lord, for the revival of your church. We pray, Lord, for the healing of Christian families, for the salvation of families that don't know you. We pray for the healing of this nation. And we pray your blessings and guidance for all pastors and church ministers and missionaries around the world who are truly saved and called by you. We pray for the salvation and leadership and wisdom for the President of the United States and for all government officials. Uh, who run this country and all other countries of the world. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And uh, we pray, Lord, for all Christians being persecuted around the world, in China especially, in Nigeria, in Kenya, and other places across Africa, and in the Philippines. We pray for the healing of all people who are still suffering from Ebola, Zika, uh, the bubonic plague, the coronavirus. Uh, folks, Lord, uh, in hospitals across this nation and around the globe. We pray, Lord, for their salvation as they face death. We pray, Lord, for children suffering from all diseases and poverty around the world. We pray for their healing and their deliverance. And we pray for innocent civilians in all war-torn countries, uh, such as Syria, Iraq, Ukraine, Sudan, Nigeria, Libya, Myanmar, and Afghanistan. We pray, Lord, for the Rohingya refugees and all refugees for the better Israel people group to receive the gospel, to be saved, and the help they need to get out of the poverty situation they're in. Everybody should be praying over the prayer list. And we pray for uh, Asia Bibi, we pray for a few missionaries and your servants who millions have prayed for and how you deliver them out of terrible situations as you did uh, Paul and Silas and Peter. We pray for Bibi and her family, for Andrew Brunson and his family, uh, for Miriam Ibrahim and her family, and we pray for Saeed Abedini and his family. And we pray that you would continue to bless them as well. We pray for all migrants from the Middle East and Africa and South America to be saved and blessed, and even from Haiti and the islands and the uh, Caribbean. 
Lord, that they would have and get everything they need. And we pray for their salvation and that they will be provided for. Holy Father God, as we pray for ministry needs, we pray for your uh, blessings and your provision for Gospel Light Society, Gospel Light House of Prayer, uh, ministries, uh, Torch Ministries, uh, Go to Church Online, uh, Gospel Light Broadcasting Network, uh, TV, Gospel Light World Radio, Evangelio Loves Mundo Radio, GLS Holiday Evangelistic Campaigns. Uh, we pray for the Just Jesus Evangelistic Campaign as it is still ongoing after five years. And we thank you for those five years and for giving us your grace and your strength and your energy and the power of your Holy Spirit to pray and to preach your Holy Gospel and to preach your Holy Word, the whole counsel of God. And now, Holy Father God, we pray for some of the thousands of prayer requests that have come in. We pray for Bahima, uh, and we pray for all of the people from all around the world who have sent in prayer requests. We pray that you'll hear and answer their prayers, hear and answer our prayers for them. We pray for salvation and spiritual and family and life, financial and material, protection and provision, and uh, uh, mental and physical blessings upon each and every one. And we pray that you'll protect them all from the coronavirus plague if they have it. Lord, uh, as we have been told, uh, every 33 seconds in one part of this country, people are being infected with the coronavirus plague. We also have been told that the coronavirus plague is outpacing the vaccine uh, effort. And so, Lord, we pray that you would comfort, and that we pray that you will protect these people and comfort them and save them before it is eternally too late, as thousands are dying each day. And so, Lord, we pray for Bahima. Please bless him with uh, donations for his children's home. We pray for Minaj. Please heal him from ulcerative lesions in his mouth. Bless him with the right uh, medication and proper treatment. We pray for uh, Wen Yang, for your will to be done regarding his Nigerian Navy application, strengthen his prayer life. We pray for Rosario, for Arika and Daryl's relationship, for their love to continue to be strong, prosper and grow and help them to grow each day in an unshakable union that will shine the light uh, of Jesus on all who know them. Help them to bear the trials and tribulations that lie ahead and help them to always keep Jesus at the center of their lives. We pray for Vicki. Please help Cecilia's uh, dog and uh, comfort Cecilia and give her strength. We pray for Isaac. Please bless him with the money he needs to build a church building. For your glory, praise, and honor for the salvation of lost souls. We pray for Wayne. Please heal Darcy from heart problems, swelling in her feet, arthritis, COPD, and anxiety. Please heal Jennifer from an enlarged heart and congestive heart failure. Please bless Gary with a new job as well. And now, Lord, we pray for people who have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and received Jesus Christ in their hearts. Uh, Lord, from the preaching of the gospel uh, from this ministry, 
And we pray for all other people who have gotten saved through other ministries and help them all to grow in the faith and to stand strong in the faith and to repent, uh, Lord, of their sins and, and be true Christians. And, Lord, we pray also that you would protect them from the coronavirus plague, bless them with household salvation and spiritual blessings, family and life blessings, financial and material blessings, protection and provision blessings and mental and physical blessings, particularly in this day and time. We pray for James. We pray for Clems. We pray for Samson. We pray for Aditha. We pray for Gamba. We pray for Heath. We pray for Juan. And we pray for all of the people from all over the world who have gotten saved through the preaching of the gospel through this ministry, those who have sent in and told us and those who have not. And, Lord, we pray for those who have rededicated their lives uh, to you through the preaching of your holy word in this ministry. And, uh, Lord, we do not give this invitation, but the people have spontaneously uh, heard, the, they heard the preaching and they spontaneously began to send in how they were revived and were rededicating their lives. They were already saved, but they were backslidden, and they have chosen to come back to you. And we give you the glory, praise, and honor for that, because that's the work of your Holy Spirit and your Holy Word. We pray for Fed. We pray for Cecil. We pray for Don. We pray for MB. We pray for Otito. We pray for Brenda, and we pray for Zeke. And we commit these souls into your hands as well as ours. Help us to all grow in the faith, to stand strong in the faith, and be the Christians that you want us to be. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Today, ladies and gentlemen, in the White House family uh, devotions, we're going to read Ephesians chapter one in the King James Version, and we're going to pick up reading at verse 8. Uh, later on tonight, if the Lord Tarras is coming and we live, in the evening devotions, we'll be picking up reading with what I call the family verses, verses in Ephesians chapter 6. But we're going to read the entire chapter, uh, the entire book of Ephesians in this morning uh, devotional time. Verse 8, Wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself. I want to start at verse 8. Verse 8. Wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, 
that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted. After that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. Wherefore I also after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all of the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom, and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us ward who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And have put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Uh, okay. Uh, I am preaching tonight, and so I am going to... Uh, try something uh, this morning and uh, uh, that uh, is a little bit different but right now ladies and gentlemen brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus family friends and foes uh, this is Daniel White the third President of Gospel Light Society International. With the White House Family Devotional, reading of Charles Haddon Spurgeon's classic book titled Morning and Evening. This is the podcast. This is episode number 352. Dr. Spurgeon chose for our reading today Luke 
chapter 11, verse 27 and 28, which is rare for him to pick two, two verses. The Bible reads, And it came to pass, as he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bare thee and the paps which thou hast sucked. But he said, Yea, rather blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Uh, the Prince of Preachers goes on to say it is fondly imagined by some that it must have involved very special privileges to have been the mother of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because they supposed that she had the benefit of looking into his very heart in a way in which we cannot hope to do. There may be an appearance of plausibility in the supposition, but not much. We do not know that Mary knew more than others. What she did know, she did well to lay up in her heart. But she does not appear from anything we read in the evangelists to have, uh, that is the Gospels, to have been a better instructed believer than any other of Christ's disciples. All that she knew, we also may discover. Do you wonder that we should uh, say so? Here is a text to prove it. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Remember the master's words. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. So blessedly does this divine revealer of secrets tell us his heart, that he keepeth back nothing which is profitable to us. His own assurance is, if it were not so, I would have told you. Doeth he not this day manifest himself unto us as he doeth not unto the world? It is even so, and therefore we will not ignorantly cry out, Blessed is the womb that bare thee, but we will intelligently bless God that having heard the word and kept it, we have first of all as true a communion with the Savior as the Virgin had, and in the second place as true an acquaintance with the secrets of his heart as she can be supposed to have obtained. Happy soul to be thus privileged and thus blessed. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you so much for your holy word today. We thank you for your Holy Spirit who teaches us your holy word. 
We thank you for your unction and your anointing. And we pray now that you would help us to love your holy word more, to cherish it more, to live by it more, to obey it more, to share it with others more, and to preach your holy gospel from it. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray, and for his sake, amen. Now, dear friend, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, uh, here is how you can be saved from hell yourself and walk with the Lord morning and evening until you go to that wonderful place called heaven when you die or when you're raptured up out of here. First, accept the fact that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's law. The Holy Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Second, accept the fact that there is a penalty, there is a punishment for sin, and these are realities. You are a sinner. Uh, have you ever lied before? Have you ever stolen anything of any value, even if it just cost a penny, from a store or from your parents or from a neighbor? Have you ever lusted in your heart towards a beautiful person or, uh, of, a, uh, of a material thing? Have you ever uh, dishonored? or disobeyed your parents, disrespected your parents, or your grandparents? Have you ever dishonored God by taking his name in vain, by cursing under your breath, using his name, using his name, swearing on his name that you're not lying when you know you're lying, affirming on his name that you are not lying when you know you're lying. Have you ever cursed using his name before? If you've done any of these things, you've broken the Ten Commandments of God, and you're a sinner just like the rest of us. The Pope is a sinner. The Dalai Lama is a sinner. Joel Osteen is a sinner. I am a sinner. Any spiritual uh, hero of yours is a sinner, for we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, dear friend, the Bible states in Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death. The tragedy of life is that we die, each and every one of us. We die. We're going to die. I'm going to die. Accept it. You're going to die. You know why we die? It's not because of a car accident. It's not because we got shot. It's not because uh, of a disease. We die, dear friend, because of sin. We have sinned against God in our nature and in uh, word, thought, and deed. We have sinned against God, and God hates sin. And so sin must be punished. That's why we die. This is a form of punishment. Uh, you and I, we sit on death row. By the way, everybody's on death row, from the president to the pauper on and everybody else in between. And we will be executed. We just don't know when. And so, dear friend, uh, we die, and it is a punishment when we die. And uh, the sad part about death is that we don't... Uh, is that what comes after death 
if we do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and repent of our sins in this life, uh, you will uh, go to hell to spend eternity in torments. That's how bad sin is. God is not playing. Jesus Christ is not playing about that. You need to take them very seriously. Very seriously. Just like in our legal system, the law will hunt you down and until they find you. If you committed a crime, sometimes 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years, you must pay. And the, the, the government wants you to pay your debt to society. And so if our justice system is that way, uh, God's is much more. Uh, sin has to be paid for. Either you're going to pay for it in hell forever, or you're going to accept the payment that Jesus Christ uh, uh, paid for it with his life. But Jesus Christ suffered, bled, and died on the cross for our sins. Was buried and rose on the third day. He is the sacrificial lamb of God who suffered, bled, and died on the cross for our sins to take away the sins of the world. He was buried and rose on the third day by the power of God. And if you believe in him, you will not have to go to hell for your sins. For Jesus Christ paid our sins in full. So what you need to do is get your eternal life insurance policy squared away. And it's already paid for in full, signed in the blood of Jesus Christ. All you have to do is believe in Christ and believe his gospel, that he died for your sins, was buried, and rose on the third day by the power of God to be saved from that awful place called hell. Because I want you to realize right now, thirdly, that you need to accept the fact that you are on the road to hell right now. If you cannot remember a time where you truly believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, we're not talking about the day you joined the church. We're not talking about the day you got baptized or confirmed or sprinkled. We're not talking about the day you did some work for the church. We're not talking about the day you paid a lot of money or gave a lot of money to the church. None of that will save you. Only humble, simple belief in the Lord Jesus Christ will save your soul. We're not talking about anything else. Jesus Christ is not talking about anything else. Jesus Christ said in Matthew, chapter 18, verse 8, he preached one of his many sermons on hell. By the way, Jesus Christ preached more on hell than anybody. In the Bible. Jesus Christ preached more on hell than he did about heaven. In describing hell one day, he said that it is a place where there is weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. In another place, in describing hell, he said it is a place where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. God does not play. Jesus Christ did not play and he does not play regarding this matter of sin. Either you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and receive him as your Savior, as the man who paid your sin debt, and go to heaven because of that, or you will go to hell if you reject Christ, and if you love darkness more than light. That is a reality, and that is a fact. Nobody's trying to scare you. That's just the reality. I'm trying to warn you and tell you that you can be saved from hell. You don't have to go. 
But in this sermon, Jesus Christ preached a very uh, shocking message regarding hell to show you the seriousness of it. For he said, Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, if your hand and your foot lead you to sin against God, and sin against Jesus, and sin against the Word of God, and lead you to love darkness so much over light, to love your wicked life of sin more than righteousness in God and believing in Jesus Christ for your salvation because you love sin so much. Cut them off and cast them from thee, Jesus said. It is better for thee to enter into life, that is, eternal life in heaven, halt or maim, that is, with an amputated hand or and an amputated foot, rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting life, everlasting fire, <clears throat> rather, rather uh, to be cast into everlasting fire. And by the way, Jesus Christ uh, emphasized nearly every time he preached on hell that the fire will not be quenched. It is eternal fire. It is everlasting fire. Also, the Bible states, dear friend, in Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, God mentions those who will go to hell, some of them who will go to hell, many others will go to hell and have gone to hell because of the, their sins. Uh, but God says here, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable, that includes homosexuals, that includes men who rape little girls and little boys, that includes uh, what's in, even in the news today, wicked people trying to have sex with animals, that includes wicked men having sex, trying to have sex with their daughters, wicked women trying to have sex with their sons, even in the so-called mixed or uh, combined families uh, where there is uh, a stepfather and a stepmother. Uh, these people understand that they are in a parental role and they are not to touch their stepchildren. Uh, these are abominable people, teachers who take advantage of children, uh, and so forth. These will all go to hell. Do not fool yourself. And murderers, people who kill other people, and whoremongers, these are the adulterers, the adulteresses, the fornicators of the world who have heterosexual sex, but uh, outside of marriage. And the sorcerers, people who practice voodoo and witchcraft. Those who deal in the horoscope. And idolaters, people who put anything or anybody before God Almighty and before Jesus. And all liars, all liars, all liars, all of these people, the unbelieving, the ag agnostics, the atheists, those to the fearful, those too afraid uh, to get saved because they want to be politically correct on the job and in society. All and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And so, dear friend, if you are in this number or you have committed other sins and uh, you can repent, you can trust Christ as Savior and he will help you to repent. And turn from your evil ways. And God will help you to be the Christian that he wants you to be. 
So this is all bad news. Hell is bad news. The lake of fire is bad news. Sin that leads to hell is bad news. But here's the good news. I do have some good news for you. In fact, as someone said recently, it is great news. Jesus Christ said in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. All you have to do is follow the simple instructions of Jesus Christ. He said, whosoever, the word whosoever means anybody at any time. Red, yellow, black, or white, we're all precious in God's sight. Then he said, believeth. Believeth means to simply trust in Jesus Christ. Have faith in Jesus Christ. Believeth in him, Jesus Christ. And if you believe in Jesus Christ, Jesus immediately promises that you should not perish. You will not therefore perish in hell, but have everlasting life. So, dear friend, just believe in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ suffered, bled, and died on the cross for your sins. He paid your sin debt was buried and rose on the third day by the power of God for you so that you can live forever with him. Pray and ask him to come into your heart, dear friend, to save your soul today, and he will. He will do it. For Romans 10, 9 and 13 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou, you, shall be saved. Saved from what? Saved from hell. Eternal burning hell. That's what you're getting saved from. Saved to what? Saved to heaven to be with God and Jesus Christ and the angels and the saints of God, the beloved family forever. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So, dear friend, again, we're not talking about church membership. You don't have to be in a church to get saved. I got saved in a dorm room. Millions have gotten saved in many different places. The Ethiopian eunuch got saved on a chariot in the Bible. So you can get saved right where you are. You don't need to be in a church building. And uh, in most cases, you can't go to a church building today. You don't need to be a member of a church you don't need to get baptized to get saved. These are all good things to do after you get saved, and God will help you with that. Jesus will help you with that. The most important thing right now, the most pressing thing, my dear friend, is for you to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart. Call on his name. Let him know that you want him to be your Lord and Savior. Pray and ask him to save your soul, and he will. And so, dear friend, as long as you're willing to believe in your heart, in Jesus Christ, that he paid your sin debt by suffering and bleeding and dying on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose on the third day by the power of God, I'm willing to lead you in what is called the sinner's prayer, right where you are. So follow me in prayer. Repeat. Uh, after me, phrase by phrase, and mean it from your heart. Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I admit that I have sinned against you. 
I have broken your Ten Commandments, as was mentioned in this message. I have done evil in your sight, for Jesus Christ's sake. Please have mercy and grace upon my soul. And please forgive me of all of my sins. As I now believe with all of my heart in your Holy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who suffered and bled and died on the cross for my sins, was buried and rose by your power. I believe in you, Lord Jesus. Please come into my heart and into my spirit, Lord Jesus, and save my soul today from the hell that I deserve to the heaven that I do not deserve by your grace and by your mercy. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent of all of my sins. Help me to turn from my evil life and to follow you, Lord Jesus Christ, in the new life. Lord Jesus, for I pray this in your name. Amen. Now, dear friend of mine, if you believed in your heart today that Jesus Christ suffered, bled, and died on the cross for your sins, that he was buried and rose on the third day, you believed in him. Allow me to say to you, and you prayed that prayer with me, and uh, you were sincere. Allow me to say to you, congratulations on doing the most important thing in life, and that is believing in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ Jesus, please go to gospellightsociety.com and read my book free of charge titled What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Now, dear friend, if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior today, uh, please email us at dw3 at gospellightsociety.com and let us know. We have some free material that we want to send you to help you to grow in the faith and become the strong disciple in Christ that God wants you to be. If you have a prayer request, please email that to us as well, and we will pray for you until you tell us to stop. Until next time, my beloved, God loves you, we love you. And may God bless you real good is my prayer. If the Lord tarries his coming, I will be preaching tonight. Uh, Lord willing, at 7 o'clock Eastern Time, 6 o'clock Central Time, and uh, 4 o'clock Pacific. Uh, and we thank the Lord for all of you and the huge crowd on last night and on yesterday morning uh, across all platforms. And we pray that you will, because of the fact we're standing between the living and the dead, and we really mean that, and we get that from the Bible, by the way. People are living and people are dying. It is your job to be a witness for the Lord in any way that you can. And if you're not going to witness to them because they, you're too close to them, their family or whatever, uh, they may be church members, they may be pastors, they may be pastors' wives, but they also may be lost and on their way to hell. Get them under the sound of the gospel tonight. Every time I preach, 
As you know, my first calling is as an evangelist. And so my first concern is getting people saved from hell. And I will make it very clear and plain to them. So tonight, uh, get as many people as you can. Don't just bring yourself. I thank God for you coming. But if you're already saved, get somebody there. Get some young people, some teenagers. Uh, get some people who are on their sick bed at home or on their deathbed in the hospital. Uh, have the nurse to put the face, uh, put the um, iPad up. Put earphones on their ears so they can hear me preach the gospel. Because even if they're on a ventilator and they can't talk, they can hear. And faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And they can pray too. They can pray under their breath, my dear friend. There's a whole lot going on. If they're still living, there's a whole lot going on up in there. So uh, that's what I want you to do. And please, if you have a prayer list, put my name and our minister's name on your prayer list. Even if you don't like me, you have to love me if you're a child of God, if you're saved. Even if you don't like me, you don't like the way I preach, and you, you don't like what I preach, rather, uh, you still have to love me. So put me on your prayer list. And uh, make sure you pray without ceasing throughout this day for yourself and for your family and for whatever ministry that God has given to you. And uh, pray throughout this day. Pray for lost souls to be saved so that we can see millions saved before it is eternally too late because millions are dying. We're standing between the living and the dead. God bless you, dear friends. Until next time, Lord willing, we'll see you tonight.